It's that week between Christmas and New Year that just kind of leaves funny feelings, not quite sure what day it is, and you're exhausted from socialising, but it's also kind of relaxing. It's lovely, and I love it, and I also feel this constant internal struggle with it. I wonder if I'm the only one who has that weird feeling between Christmas and New Year. I always stop and reflect for the odd five minutes or longer about the Christmas experience and I kind of just feel it's just not quite right for me. It just doesn't match up to the build-up and I want it to be something different. I don't quite get the depth of time to really go deeper into that. And then New Year approaches. It's actually New Year's Eve today. I'm not feeling very well. And our hosts for our New Year's Eve party tonight, bless them, they're really poorly, so poorly that they can't actually host. And so, um, you know, plans are changing and and I'm just sitting here in the car. The kids are playing with Sam in the park and I've got a little baby that in the back sleeping that I'm looking after today. So I'm just sitting here for a very unusual, quiet space. And I'm wondering, why do I feel like this every year? What can I do about that? How different do I want to live? Why do I want to live differently? This big shift that I keep talking about, this big shift is happening. And I feel like 2017 is the year that some of the bigger shifts are going to occur for me, for my family and potentially for the community around me. What does that actually mean? I'm wondering about how to do Christmas in a way that truly fits, that, that truly means Christmas. I had a day yesterday that was just beautiful. It was just marred slightly that it was just me and the kids. It would have been even better if it was a few more people around us and with us and, and Sam included and we played games all day it was freezing cold outside it was so cold we couldn't go out we had the fire raging and we shut all the doors in the lounge we lit loads of candles and we just got game after game we read books we had all sorts of wonderful cozy drinks snacks and we just spent time as a family I loved it today we're looking after some children that um, I volunteer with to just offer them support, some support while they're in a, a, a stage of crisis and the two days combined you know giving and receiving and offering and taking and you know cosy and together and safe and warm and outside and fresh and it meet it meets something in me and it works and I'm wondering why life can't be like that all the time just a balance just a beautiful balance but instead it feels rushed and pressured and hard work and tiring and over over all over the top all the time and, and her money flies out the door it's so scary how much money flies out the door just to do life at this pace and with this intensity I want to rebalance it and I'm going to be looking this year about the how, the how to. I've got a desperate urge to not spend on anything for the next three months. Let's see how well I do with that. It's going to be hard. I'm going to start by having a season of no swimming lessons. If my kids need to go swimming to improve their swimming skills, me and Sam will take them and we'll learn the way that I learnt and that Sam learnt. That's the first thing. That will save me about 300 quid. I mean, I've got a runny nose. Happy New Year. <laughs> I genuinely mean that. Happy New Year. And I want us to genuinely, when we offer that to other people, I want us to mean that. You know, Happy New Year. What does that mean? Happy Christmas. It doesn't mean get stressed out, find it all too manic, find it all too rushed, and before you know it, it's over and you've you've moved on. 
Let's really stop and really think, what, do, what does it take to have a happy new year?